Hey friends, Alvin here. Uh, we are continuing on with our interview series. And so today I am pleased to be joined by Dean and Maxine Bender. Uh, Maxine is the youth leader at Chesley Baptist and Dean is the pastor there. But like uh, a lot of married couples, they work well as a team. So uh, welcome Maxine and Dean. Thank you. And so uh, as we've been doing these interview series, uh, one of the first questions I've been asking one, everyone is this. Uh, right now, since March break, what have you seen change in your youth so far? Well, um, to kind of give this some thought before we started. Um, actually, I think with not meeting together um, and um, physically being together um, and having activities, um, it doesn't seem like the kids have the same joy. They don't have a spark or spunk. Um, I think that's the great, the, the biggest thing. When you talk to them on the phone, when you text them at short answers, um, we've been doing Zoom meetings. There's just not a lot of life in the party. <laughs> really flat, like really no emotion. Like they seem to be emotionally drained at this point. Like what are we now, seven, eight weeks? Mm -hmm. And it, that's what I've noticed. There's mm -hmm. not, a, not, not a lot of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we've noticed. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, what would you say are s some of their responses to you or maybe some uh, issues that they've brought up that they're facing? Mm -hmm. Well, if you ask some pointed questions, um, they will say that like they're working on their schoolwork. Um, some of them are at ants. Some of them are being looked after grandmas or they're just at home. Um, they'll say that um, they're bored, they're on YouTube a lot, they're on their devices. Um, some of them are getting out and about a bit, um, like biking and stuff. But yeah, there just doesn't seem to have a lot of excitement. And we tried to put spark into our Zoom meetings. Um, I tried like a contest where we all wear a funny hat Dean had a goofy hat on, like literally goofy from Disney. And I had a, uh, like an elf hat from Christmas. And we encouraged them to all wear funny hats. We'd have contests. Nobody did it. A couple of them had ball caps on. That's about it. That was it. There was just no interest in that kind of fun or making just fun. Um, we've, we've been doing um, video. Um, Dean has been doing video sermons and at the end of we've had a six week kids and youth challenge and i've been doing a short video challenging kids with something each week and i have two youth that have finished it and three kids um and they're all going to get large pizzas this week but um that's not a very high proportion considering the amount of kids yeah. that could have done it like there, we could have had 10 to 12 youth do it. We had two, two teenagers. We could have had 10 kids. We've had three. Um, and yeah. And I think some of them are being pushed by the parents. The ones that are doing keep it. keep active. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. Um, they probably really miss activity mm -hmm. other than their siblings, the interaction. That's what I've noticed. Um, I, see, I notice a lot of hoods up on the boys that, that usually wouldn't wear a hoodie a lot, but the hoods are up, the heads are down. Mm -hmm. They're just tired of what's going on, no, mm -hmm. no interaction. Mm -hmm. But there's at this point, what are you going to do? I mean, like it's, that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. so. And so right now, uh, as I mean, like you said, it sounds like a lot of them are, are just kind of waiting for this to, to be over. Um, what are some of the, I mean, I guess right now, what are some of those one-on-one -on -one conversations drawing out? One-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, that's more with you. Yeah. Um, well, think doing things with their family. Um, doing things with their siblings, which they haven't done happy to see their friends so one thing about i know one one girl we had the zoom on saturday night she got her hair cut and she had really long hair and that sparked of interest from a couple other girls that hadn't seen her 
we've been having Zoom meetings every week, but they're never all there. We were always missing some, and we had most of the kids, minus two, there on Saturday night. Um, and actually, Saturday night was the best Zoom that we'd had. Yeah, the one youth had cut her hair, and it had been really long, and so the other, some of the other kids hadn't seen it. And so that did spark conversation about it. It was just lighthearted, normal conversation, which was really good to hear, just because the girl had cut her hair and the other kids hadn't seen it. So it seems a simple thing, but that was good. One thing about our Zoom meeting on Saturday that I made it extra special, we took the kids in January on a mission trip to Toronto. And it was organized through um, Youth for Christ Project Serve. And the youth leader that was our leader and took, um, she organized the whole thing, it was amazing. Her name is Paula. And um, so we invited her on our Zoom meeting on Saturday night. And she has a really big, wonderful personality. And she loves the, and she's silly and awesome. And the kids loved her. And so it was a really good Zoom meeting. And um, that did bring, a lot of spunk and, and we had that really positive um mission trip where we were helping the homeless and we helped in um a community dinner where they were feeding like 400 people every day we ha helped serve that we, we had that bond of that great experience we spent the night on the friday night in a church um so we need the together experiences um that's what makes a youth group. Yeah, the kids need that interaction, the togetherness, to be part of something. Like, I guess that's the physical nature of us, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. They need to be part of something other than just on a video. Mm -hmm. Like, put it this way. They were always on their devices before, but now their device has become the mainstay, and they're kind of tired of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? They, they want that physical interaction. And I think what I can see is they're getting tired of looking on their phones. They see people. They want to actually have a conversation in the physical. So it, it could change in the long run. It could, could be good when you, when you see things happening like that. And so right now, you know, as, through some of your conversations, what are things that, they, that they've expressed that they're looking forward to? Uh, what kinds of things are they hoping to get back to? Get back to? School. Yeah. They all mentioned school. Mm -hmm. how, how much they miss school. And their friends. Yeah. They miss their friends. They miss, they miss the school atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I don't know actually about doing the work. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, um, when you take something on somebody that they're used to and there's no end in sight, that's a big impact. Like all kids are used to gathering on a weekly basis. And once you take it on them, they miss it. Something that I noticed too is like they are, they will express their boredom mm -hmm. um, that they, um, they have a lot of time in their hands. And yet when they're given the chance to do um, challenges or contests, Paula gave them a contest also through um, the project serve and two weeks to do it. And, um, there's two girls that said that they're interested. There didn't seem to be a lot of excitement and they could win $25 by doing it. A gift card. Yeah. A gift card for $25. Um, and then the challenges that I initiated over the past six weeks where they get a large pizza, if they do it, um, it just seems like they're stuck. They, um, they're bored, but they don't have the energy or the drive to actually do things. So, I don't know. It's hard to um, ignite them and get them excited about stuff. Excitement's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we had, were planning a lot of fun things before all this happened, and we had lots of excitement in that group. Um, yeah. But we can't do any of it. <laughs> Right now, uh, how would you describe the, the spiritual development or the faith formation in, in some of them right now? Hmm. 
Slim to none. I don't know. We want to keep on. I think I'm going to continue trying to do one-on-one -on -one texting and calling. Um, because I don't know that they would open up in a group setting on Zoom, really where their heart is. Um, a lot of the kids we have, some of them anyway, they don't have a very strong um, faith-based home. So they won't be getting that from home. Some of them do, and some of them don't. So... Um, so I, I think I'm going to just keep on trying, but it, it is draining. Like I'm finding myself drained and I have to keep praying that God gives me energy to keep on because um, you don't get a lot of, of response back. I'm just happy when they answer my texts <laughs> that they actually communicate back with me and we get a conversation going. Because sometimes they don't, and you leave it a few days, they try again, and they will. Like so, I don't know. And, and meeting with the kids virtually is a lot more draining than physically. Like I would physically sooner run around outside with ten teenagers and sit and try to interact over virtually. Like it's draining because you got to carry the whole load. There's like there's no give from them. It's all initiated okay mm -hmm. and that's what's hard mm -hmm. yeah and yet what else do we have what choice do we have there really is nothing else yeah. now we did visit a uh, driveway visit and uh, the kids were really excited to see us that was a success yeah yes i forgot about that yeah we so seen three really we should be doing that which takes us driving around and um and actually connecting when they're available we have to you have to plan that but we've done that with one family actually maybe two two families and that was like there was excitement there to see us actually so and we didn't really talk about anything important <laughs> and the parents were there so no i think you're uh, i think there's something that you're You've landed on there, right? In terms of that, uh, while, while it may not be the whole group getting together, that that physical. I think you're you're helping us to understand that that physical connection, even if it's six feet apart yeah. on a driveway, is still uh, is still vital and still very important to to a person's life. Yeah, they need that. Yeah, yeah, especially kids. Mm -hmm. Well, they, I they need even adults, but kids are feeling it. They're yeah. uh, yeah. Well, I think more so than some of the adults we that we have in the church are feel. I think the kids are feeling it more than the adults. Like this one girl that is normally just wired, and she could like she's unpredictable um, when she's at youth group. Like on Zoom, you could if she did answer, you could hardly hear her. Yeah. Like, it's just like a different youth, a different girl. I couldn't believe it. But it, it's interesting though, we may have lost one lad, right? Maybe. But we gained another girl that we reconnected with. Yes. That had a, that's had a few issues and stuff, but she, we reconnected with her now. Yes. And she's on every meeting, it's kind of cool. She didn't even go to the no. uh, mission trip to Toronto and she's but in she, on the meeting. But she's back in on the meeting. Yeah. And her little brother. And she's brought along her little brother. Yeah, that's right. Kind of cool. Who's grade six? We we started our youth at grade six. We dropped it a, a year a year ago because um, it seems like that age was just slipping through the cracks. We don't have a junior youth. We have a, a kids a kids club that goes up to grade six, but most grade sixes drop out because they feel they're too old. And then we have our senior youth, which we used to start at grade seven. Um, so we wouldn't let the grade sixes join because we said we had the younger group, which they didn't go. So we just dropped the age a year and, and it's working. Probably for some of the boys losing the Thursday night basketball has really affected them. There's no contact there anymore. That was one contact I had with mm -hmm. a lot of teenage boys and that's gone. Like, so when that comes back, I have no idea. Okay. That I've really noticed that effect. There's one family that had 
one, two, three, four boys. Like that deer just dropped away. No contact at all. So that wasn't our youth group. That was like an that, out, that outreach. Was a, another outreach we did. Like it's ended, the fire is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is too bad. Yeah, there's nothing we can do there. Because we don't know the families well enough to drop in. They, these are kids that just came from the town and we'd have like 20 to 25. Yeah. So anyway, hopefully it comes back. So I'm going to change gears here a bit. Uh, you're actually the first couple that I've had a chance to interview like this. And given that you're both uh, involved in, in ministry, uh, you know, even just based on some of our conversations before, right? A lot, of, a lot of the things you do, you do together. And so how is, how is this whole setup now impacted um, the way you work together? The way we work together? Mm. That's a good question. Honestly, we really move in the same direction. I don't think, I don't think much has changed. We um, really like we done, we done our kids club together. We done youth group together. Maxine come to basketball the odd time because there wasn't that many girls involved. And then we had another woman that was there had taken attendance and stuff, but it's pretty much the same flow as what we had before. A lot more computer work. And I do most of the computer. She's my secretary. Most of the computer work, so I'm really busy. Yeah. Our um, workload is doubled. Yeah. Okay, so we started a community meal um, a couple years ago for many reasons. Um, and uh, for people on social assistance, for disabled, for the elderly, for people that are alone, um, single, like lonely, any reason, and they would come and have community at this meal. Well, of course, when COVID happened, it ended. And then um, about a few weeks after that, um, we got contacted by um, United Way and Public Health and encouraged us to start it up again in the form of a takeout. And so we have been doing that every Thursday. We do a meal, a main hot meal, and we have volunteers that are delivering, and we do about 90 meals every thursday dean and i cook it we do the cooking we do the cooking together because we don't want anybody else in the kitchen with us and then we um have people that serve and we are wearing masks and we have hand sanitizer we have physical distancing and um we have people we put a scripture in every bag of every meal gets a, a scripture and some of the food that I deliver personally is for some of the families and kids that are in the youth group and we're at basketball. So we, we still have a connection there. When I, when I do make, I, we deliver food too, so the packages. So I can still see the kids that way. And some of them, they're looking out the window waiting for you. So that is a good connection. Okay. We still have that physical contact for a couple of minutes while we're talking from the porch down to the driveway with some of the kids that we take these dinners to. Yeah, because that's uh, single moms. We have a few single moms that, that are, are home with little children, with that young are, children. That are getting the meals, three yeah. families, four families. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Dean and I just seem to, God has been really good um, to allow us to kind of like flow in the same direction and work in many avenues and directions for ministry. Um, we have seen miracles and blessings. We needed another fridge. And um, because the one fridge wasn't working very well, and I had to throw out some fresh produce. And um, just in chatting with an elderly person to see how they were, because they have Alzheimer's and come to our church, um, she mentioned it to somebody she knew. And he went and talked to somebody he knew. And before we knew it, that day we had another fridge, almost a brand new fridge. And then um, when he was delivering the fridge, and it was paid for by somebody else and when it, it the fridge is being delivered um it was noticed that the one stove had burners not working and we have we need to, two stoves um he brought down and gave us a stove so we have almost a new stove and a new fridge uh just like boom it's amazing amazing and uh, we've had many people tell us that um the meals are just like a beacon in the middle of a leak 
something to light up their life. So that's that's definitely encouraging. And I I know that uh, even as you were mentioning uh, the way that some of your deliveries allow for those additional touch points, right? I think that's that's definitely vital. And so uh, that's that's amazing to hear. As we're well, for ahead. those children, for those children that are in the homes that Dean delivers to, um, we always put in um, coloring pictures for them that have to do with a Bible story. So I think there's um, three six, seven, uh, three of the kids are older that they wouldn't color, two of the kids, but the other ones would all color. So about seven coloring pictures yeah. go out to so kids. We're, st we're still contacting as much physical as possible on a weekly basis. We mm -hmm. had forgot about that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as we're coming near the end of our interview here, uh, what would you have as a word of encouragement or a word of wisdom to those who are who are watching this right now? Just seeing the truth and keep plugging along. Like mm -hmm. God will provide what you need. Like we've like we've seen it firsthand. Like like getting equipment within a couple of days that we needed, and we didn't really have the finances to go buy them ourselves. But we get we're getting donations. Like financially keep these meals going and keep interacting so yeah just keep in the faith and carry on mm -hmm. and god will provide yeah we just have hope for tomorrow and trust that god will give us the strength i know personally myself every morning i get up and i thank god for the day and i ask him to give me strength to get through and get wisdom how to spend the day wisely and so far i believe he's with me and he's providing that so that's what i would say everyone needs to give thanks for their day mm -hmm and ask for wisdom and discernment how to spend that day. And on a me personal note, uh, even myself, I know my workload is doubled, like, because there's a lot of more thinking got to go into stuff other than, this, other than the Sunday morning sermon. That is the part that I've noticed. So if I can encourage any pastors or people in ministry, just, yeah, rely on God's strength because you can't do it on your own. It's, I know we're all in the same situation mm -hmm. together and every situation is different. Like we're in a small town community, which is totally different than a major center, but the issues are the same. The issues are all the same and the need is the same. And people are all searching for something that they can't get right now. They want that capacity of compassion and love poured upon them. And a lot of people don't know where to get it. Like, and, and we, and we are the boots on the ground right now. And we should be all one voice, one church, all rowing in the same direction for, for the kingdom. In our, in our little part of the world that we can make an impact in the people that usually don't go to church or hear the word of God. That's what we're noticing. Like even on our YouTube videos, we're well over 2,500 views. Like it's just blowing my mind the people that are watching it. Like I had no idea. And the comments we get coming back at us. And so now I'm being told that we can't stop it once we're back inside the building, but who knows, right? Where that's going to lead. But just encourage one another to stay strong and do it for the glory of God. Well, I hope, uh, I hope that this was, you felt that this was a wise use of your time. And oh, yeah. so, uh, no, I appreciate you taking a few minutes to, to share some of your insights, uh, share some of the things, even just even some of those stories where uh, it was neat in the last few minutes to, to see you uh, remind each other, oh, yeah, this happened. Oh, yeah, that happened. So definitely this is a great reminder for us to, to see one of the, some of the things that God works and maybe sometimes that we tend to forget, but then we're reminded of. So I appreciate, your, I appreciate you taking the time to walk us through this. We appreciate your Thanks, time Albert. for contacting. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, you guys, God bless you guys in Toronto there and CBOQ. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like we're all in different situations right now. Like your office is your car, which I think is a real hoot. That, that's the best one I've heard this week. So mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully we can impact people that we wouldn't normally impact. That's what my prayer is. That might bring people back to Christ. Like this could be the great revival again. Who knows? through all this.
definitely uh, appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Alba. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Dave, have to take, say hi to your kids for us. <laughs>